And now on to our topic of radical. I'd like to introduce Javen Solomon. Javen is an interdisciplinary designer who explores projects and experiences that explore progress, innovation, social equity, and environmental sustainability. Javen is the co-founder of Painted Black, a project that empowers local black artists by connecting and collaborating with community organizations. Since the project began, the group has painted many boarded up businesses, constructed and painted archways for the St. Louis Shakespeare Festival, a late summer night stroll in Forest Park, and many more exciting projects that are in the works. Javen, thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me. And you know, thank you all for coming to, to listen to this schmuck talk this morning. <laughs> no, it's great to have you. How have you been? Uh, you know, I've been doing all right in the grand scope of things these days, uh, certainly in no shortage of things to do uh, with with Paint and Black. In fact, we're working on uh, an experience in the Central West End with Shakespeare uh, as we speak. So that's sort of the big, big task, but, you know, lots of stuff to to do and, uh, you know, obviously see and experience as as the year has taught us. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's jump right in here. I know um, you and myself and Sam kind of met up before this talk today to kind of go over what we'd be talking about. And uh, when we had first discussed the topic of radical, you had mentioned that it had two different definitions. Would you be able to explain a little bit more or give some examples from your own experience? Yeah, so <laughs> one, one thing that I like to do to make sure that I'm not you know, entirely off base, you know, before I open my mouth to say something is look it up, right? So this, this for me particularly plays out the most when it comes to like words, right? So when someone says a new word, I'll be like, what does that mean? Look it up. So in this case, it's the same thing. I just like wanted to re-familiarize myself with like what the definition of radical is to make sure I'm not missing anything. And it turns out uh, there are two sort of main definitions of what radical is. And the second one, or excuse me, the, the, the one we understand uh, radical to be more so uh, societally is actually the second definition. Uh, and that is, you know, the, the extreme shifts. Uh, when in fact, you know, if you go to Merriam-Webster, right now online and look up the word radical, the first definition will be uh, of or relating to, or, you know, proceeding from a root. And everyone, forgive me, we all, I, I like to assume we all know how dictionaries tend to word things. They, they, they give you a verbal runaround, but basically uh, the definition is fundamental, uh, coming from a root. Um, and this could pertain to a lot of things, be it plants or like the base of a stem, linguistic or, you know, mathematics, which is why I like, I used to always call it like the square root sign, but it's actually called like the radical sign, right? When you get to the root of something, uh, mm -hmm. which is actually, uh, first of all, that explains why I didn't do so great in high school calculus, but uh, second, <laughs> that, was a good, that was a good reminder. You What'd you say? I hear you there. Man. Anything uh, math related. That's right. We'll save that for the second talk. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's essentially to stem from the root of something or to to serve as a foundation. Uh, so it was very interesting for me to sort of think about that in the context of this conversation uh, that we've had before as well as now, because it, we it's it's got so many. I realized the radical has so many actual applications. Uh, in the case of painted black, we are sort of both in that, you know, primarily, and you know, the reason I believe that we have gotten to the point we are now is because it's such a dramatic shift from uh, a norm that we've been exhibiting, you know, in St. Louis for some time now, and that is, you know, properly supporting local black artists and local artists in general uh and it's 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 it gets at a fundamental root in a sense in that we you know we're we're not 
coming in and telling folks what to do. We are working with folks, right, from from the ground up, as it were. So like grassroots could be another, I think, interpretation of sort of this iteration of the word radical. Sure. So yeah, I mean, the it, word. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I wasn't. Go ahead. You go ahead. Oh, you're good. No, you had mentioned the word normal, and um, it just kind of sparked a thought of, I think everyone in 2020, especially, is we're all ready to get back to normal. But um, do you think yourself is normal a place that we want to go back to? You know, like obviously, want we want to become better. Yeah. Are you so? Are you actually right. asking? Yeah. Just your thoughts. I'm gonna keep that short. So we, my short <laughs> answer is no. Uh, because, I mean, normal, I know I said I'm going to keep it short, and I'm fighting back the need, the need to really get into it. Um, no, because normal changes. The word normal is, I'm not going to say a fallacy, because it's, it's a set of conditions in which we all agree to, you know, live under, right? So, like, quarantine is normal now. I hate, I hate to say it, you know, because I don't, you know, I don't like it as much as the next person, but it's just sort of what it is. And it has been for, you know, the majority of this year. So I would love to get back to, you know, a point where we can be around folks again, right? But like, it, be around folks and, you know, live in a different manner uh, but not necessarily back to the way we used to do things because, um, you know, the way we, the way we used to, and, you know, still do in a lot of ways do things uh, just, <laughs> it wasn't as we all, you know, are exhibiting, it wasn't quite as, as glorious and glamorous as, you know, some of us make it out to be. And that's fine. <laughs> I think. Right. Yeah. From, from your life experiences, um, you know, you had mentioned the different meanings of radical and it, that it can take on really a positive and a negative. Um, can you expand a little bit more on that in your own personal life? For sure. So in, in my experience, uh, radical, can, you know, radical means a lot of things like winning the lottery, for example, which I have not done. That is not my personal experience, but uh, we, it's, it's just like, it's mainly a dramatic shift. And I know the word radical is mostly sort of displayed in the, in the world of politics, but like winning the lottery is a great dramatic shift or anything like that. Um, I, you know, Painted Black, again, is an example of that in that, you know, I, I personally didn't think it was or is, you know, a, it's not a complicated thought. So it's, it's, it's been interesting to me to observe sort of the progress of Painted Black and my own sort of work specifically because I, um, you know, I got to a point in the last few years where I just like, have been wanting to have fun and help folks at the same time and not hurt people at the same time. And I, you know, I mm -hmm. want to emphasize that last point uh, because a lot of us tend to think that, you know, if we're hurt, if we're helping one group of folks or one person, then it's forget about everybody else. And that's just not the case. But I, I thought that was a basic, you know, just sort of idea is to pay artists and, you know, the black ones specifically in a realm where, you know, we're all hashtagging Black Lives Matter and posting the black squares and all of this good stuff. This is just the action behind it. Um, and and uh, apparently it was, it was something that was necessary in the community and much, you know, much more well received than I anticipated, uh, or we anticipated, excuse me, the team and radical shift i mean we've we've managed to work with you know artists and organizations to get folks properly paid and sort of out there uh, and as far as 
that that's probably the best like good example I have uh, with my with my own stuff, and I'm sure I have more. But as far as bad examples, I mean, who here needs me to <laughs> provide an example of a bad radical thing? Mm-hmm. In in all seriousness, like, do I <laughs> do I need to do that, or has this has 2020 not shown us, you know? Right. You know, in 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 any direction, what what an example of bad radical means. So it. we we you know again i'm in a position thankfully um and of the of a thought process that like we we need to start seeing some some good radical things uh so yeah for sure yeah indeed um so speaking of the good um is that something that you see kind of only achieved through empathy and curiosity I know, um, is that kind of how you decipher if a radical idea is good or bad through those two? Yeah, yeah. Um, and thank you for bringing those words up because I think I think that is, those are probably a couple of a few key factors um, in order to achieve, you know, a constructive or destructive outcome when it comes to, you know, air quotes, radical, pardon me ideas we um so empathy and curiosity if we take the time to you know look at someone whoever it is right um and you know we see something's going on we we see that you know they're saying something they're they're voicing their concerns about something and you know the empathy and curiosity versus you know the traditional means of you know radical ideas and processes is is the main distinction between the two is um you know seeing this person that i mentioned and saying you know i wonder what's got this person so you know, I wonder why this person feels this way and why, you know, they're taking these actions and how can I, you know, learn more about it and understand it versus, oh, I better not talk to, you know, I better not talk to this person because of this, this or that, and I better leave them alone. And, you know, these, when you apply, you know, the the need to dramatically change something, I think that's a big, or that's a a, a, a point you know, where, where the road kind of splits and that like, okay, it can either go this way or, or that way. And I, you know, I think a, a lot of us need to, I've always been a <clears throat> proponent of empathy in general, uh, you know, as, as someone who, whose work tends to lean towards more like socially benefiting things or environment, environmentally beneficial things. Uh, and I've, you know, actually, thanks to to this talk, in fact, and me sort of jotting some notes down, I've been able to piece together like, oh, well, this is why, because this is integral to this process. And this is, you know, the empathy and and curiosity essentially are what, you know, make or break communication in general. So it, it makes complete sense that, you know, in the process of trying to do some things in the community, that's, you know, that's the split and the, the sure. root if we're going to get back to that other definition of you know what good radical stuff is yeah so really uh to that point i guess empathy and curiosity is kind of the foundation that everything's built on mm-hmm. what you kind of referenced earlier from where i'm standing anyway right i love it well yeah let's move on to uh art as a message you know, it kind of seems throughout uh, history, arts played a role in expanding minds and visualizing ideas or opinions about various radical concepts, be that political, environmental, sociological. Is art a form of messaging to you in that way? Always, always. As far as, you know, my understanding is of <laughs> of life and, you know, everything else is very limited and I, I see to that and I accept that, uh, you know, very humbly. So I, I'm going to say, as far as I understand, uh, always, 
always has been. It is, it, you know, they are not, art is that way now and it always will be, you know, to human beings anyway. Uh, because, and I, you know, I, I'm usually not so confident in things, uh, you know, because there's nuance to so many things, but art itself is, is such, I mean, it's a word of a thousand disciplines, right? So <laughs> art, you know, doesn't necessarily just mean murals or, you know, posters or something like that. I mean, it's, it's dance, it's music, it's, it's any form of creation essentially uh, that, you know, in turn connects with other folks and somehow folks, we always manage to connect with different forms of art of our choosing. So in the, in the realm of, you know, like painted black art specifically uh, in sort of what artists we've worked with have been doing, it's just, you know, we, and in, and in understanding this community in general, like the creative community and overall, it's, there's a lot of things that apparently aren't being communicated uh, or are, and just, you know, could use a little bit of modifying. So in that, you know, in, in folks who don't have, who aren't necessarily right at celebrity status in, in the world we live in now, um, you know, a lot of folks want to be heard and rightfully so. And the best way, and, you know, as an artist, I can say that, you know, the best way I know how to communicate something is not necessarily, uh, you know, through like some sort of status or tweet, but to channel that into something like something creative instead. So that and a lot of artists create that way. Uh, and even even folks who aren't even folks who are a little bit more commercial, it's still similar in that art always conveys some sort of message, even if it's even if it means right. nothing, even if it's nihilistic, it, 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 it has some sort of context behind it. Uh, and, you know, when you look throughout history, I mean, the most we fear and take joy in certain images because, you know, that's, that's the identity that we assign to it and, you know, in turn pull from it. So there's you know, be it be it design or art, um, you know, it's it's always and and whether we realize it or not, whether we realize it or not, it's always in the center of, you know, what these things are and like how these how how we resonate with certain messages. It's why people, you know, are hanging American flags outside of their homes. It's why, you know, when you when we see all of these demonstrations, that's why people are holding their signs up, whatever they say, right? It's it's them, you know, being creative and how they want to exhibit their voice. And, you know, in the case of protests, it 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 then becomes an image in itself. Right. So to kind of, I know you touched on this a little bit. How does painted black specifically echo kind of that ideology of art and messaging? Great question. Uh, we, <laughs> I mean, we help facilitate these things. I mean, we, so Tyson and I, and Tyson Baker is the other co founder of Painted Black STL. I'm going to give him his proper credit. Uh, what we both realize is, you know, everything that. I, I touched on, you know, in the previous answer, and this is why we think that artists should be paid, you know, properly for their, you know, time and effort because, I mean, they're the ones who are, you know, putting, putting a lot of things in the forefront, um, mm -hmm. you know, whether, whether it's public facing or not, we all you know, want to convey this message. And it just so happens that in St. Louis, uh, I mean, we all know what kind of drama we've been facing the last few years, uh, a little bit more publicly, but a lot of us want to see change as well. So instead of, 
Tyson and I saying, oh, well, we can do this, you know, and like, um, you know, promote ourselves and do this and that. It's one, one thing we both, another thing we both realize is that it's not, that no one thing is done by, no great thing rather, or change isn't achieved by, you know, an individual or a couple of individuals, um, you know, tweeting from their phone per se. Uh, right. We, and I make the face because, you know, we all know how the internet tends to be. So as to not get into that reference too much longer, uh, we, we, just we we, we want to see the folks we live with win uh and in a real way so in again in a in a moment where a lot of us are you know black lives matter and all across the internet we're saying all right how can we put our money where our mouth is in the best way we know how to do it and that is you know in that was and is in gathering donations for you know artists because money's always the question right who's paying for it so, you know, we said, we'll figure that out. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, there are several artists who want to bring some peace or, you know, unity or something like that to St. Louis and the community and or, you know, the community or neighborhood they live in. So how can we help do that? Uh, and we don't tell anyone what to say, or for the most part, you know, obviously we don't want to, uh, you know, promote something that's like violent really is the main one. Uh, but, you know, in, in that, in understanding that art has so much power, uh, you know, our, our role is to basically serve as amplifiers for, you know, folks to, to, to speak their truths. Right. How many people are uh, involved in Painted Black at this time, just ballpark? Well, the formal organization, uh, is there's only three of us. So there's Charlie right. who handles all the artist coordination and shout out to her as well. And then there's Tyson and I who co-founded it. Uh, there'll probably be more soon enough. And I'll, sure. I'll leave it there. Yeah, definitely. So to kind of move on to uh, Radical is Change, um, you know, Paint and Black along with many other initiatives that have kind of stemmed out from the pain and injustice that we're experiencing today um, are quite the shift, I would say, from where we've been in the past, mm -hmm. uh, at least with how the public is responding. Um, we're in the midst of the large movement with the goal of change. So does radical equal change to you? Positive, negative? What are your thoughts on that? You know, that's a great, that's, I hate to default to saying that's a great question because I, I really do mean it <laughs> for the record. Uh, it. Do you I find it I, being kind of a challenge? What was that last part? Do you kind of find it challenging? Yeah. Along the way? Yeah. So yes, radical, radical implies change, I think. Uh, I don't know that it is because is sort of, I think, suggests that, you know, a group of folks, be it society or, you know, anything else has agreed to move along with this thing or not, mm -hmm. for, or, you know, I won't say or not, but like they acknowledge that something will be changing, right? Whether it's good or bad, uh, but- I, change I, is hard for sure. Change is hard. It's also though, um, Yeah, so actually to the to the point of challenge, change is always difficult. Uh, and even even good change, like having having a baby is a beautiful thing, but it's like it's a challenge. I, I don't know by experience, but you know, I, I surmise it's probably a challenge, right? Um, in, in bringing a human, an infant human into the world and raising it to be fairly decent. Uh, but I digress. So we, what I think is captivating about the human race and we all I always think we tend to just like forget this and just like take it for granted but what I think is compelling about all of us is the fact that we have existed for so long and we have so you know it there's so much endurance in that like sit and really 
and all of you, you know, I, I invite you to really think about the things that the human race has seen over the last, I don't know how many thousand years and the, the things that we've literally had to migrate through and, you know, be as nomads and just deal with it, be it, be it good or bad. Uh, but we've, we've done it somehow. And, you know, we've, we've managed to stick around so far anyway. Um, so yeah, it's always, it's always hard. And I, I think that's okay because I mean, it, it makes us better in, in meeting challenges. It makes us better ultimately. Now, unfortunately, um, ch change isn't necessarily always uh, delivered in a in a in a way we wish to see it, right? So this year, for example, a lot of folks have, like a lot of folks have suffered because of so many things. Uh, but you know, we because of that, we you know we go on to either create or, you know, discuss or just commune around something in order to shift a narrative on something. And Painted Black slash the Black Lives Matter movement is no different than that. Uh, and it's, you know, even for us, it's us being Painted Black STL, it's been a hell of a process and challenging because, I mean, we all, you know, the three of us work, the artists, all have their own lives to live. And, you know, obviously mm -hmm. rightfully so. Uh, so we're, we're constantly, you know, making time and make, making time for, to, to make sure everyone's good first and foremost. And, uh, you know, in that comes the tedious task of, you know, genuinely checking in with folks, not just like an email, hey, you know, how are you doing? How's this going? But, you know, specifically sitting down with organizations and artists alike to really just make sure that everyone is feeling comfortable and, um, you know, going to whatever lengths to, to make sure we're all on the same page and moving for a, a general same page and, and moving forward. Um, and that's, you know, uh, uh, uh I think that's a small price to pay myself, but, and it still is challenging, uh, but that's just like a small note as to, you know, I think what, what change, what the change we want to see takes sometimes is it's due diligence. Right. Yeah, I think um, kind of what I find interesting myself is, you know, at the beginning of this year, everybody was on like 2020 vision this is our year you know it's yeah. gonna be awesome and then bam like so i feel like 2020 really kind of opened our eyes and you had mentioned along with all the challenges of 2020 that this year has really brought about a lot of com conversations that are positive can you explain that a little bit yeah so you know we a lot of us have been complaining about, and not me, but I have to say us because you know I I'm not separate from, I'm not separate or better than anyone else. Uh, so we have done a lot of. There's been a lot of discourse on a lot of things, uh, and I I'm I've always been of the opinion that it's better to talk about something awkwardly you know really awkwardly if if need be then not at all because mm -hmm. if if we never address things or if we never address a problem directly it's it's we're never going to directly be able to you know talk about solutions uh, not you know more specific solutions uh, and this could pertain to a lot of things, but it, um, you know, unfortunately going back to, you know, the conversation of good radical, bad radical, I don't really believe that good and bad, you know, I don't think either of those words exist without the other one. Uh, right. So because this bad stuff has been happening uh, and 
how, you know, from what from whatever political spectrum, whatever part of the political spectrum you you know you choose to identify with, you know you we uh, have we've been talking about a lot, and you know eventually I I won't say sooner or later, but eventually that's going to lead to some sort of change. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think to your point on, you can't have the good without the bad, even in um, like your health, it's like you don't really appreciate your health until you don't have it. That's right. So it is like that balance of the good and bad. That's right. And, and an another thing, Matt, that we, we talked about was sort of uh and, and that you even just touched on is clarity, right? And seeing, seeing mm -hmm. you know, what life is actually like here in St. Louis, as well as, you know, Missouri and the States in general, overall, um, you know, we, we had this idea of what normal was, uh, you know, we all agreed to, pardon me, this, you know, again, this contract that we're all gonna live by. And in being stuck inside, we've been forced to reflect, um, you know, on a lot of things, including what life was like before, right? Um, right. In, in solitude, I think, I, I like to believe most of us have been forced to, you know, do that, uh, you know, in the slowing down of, of our daily lives and, you know, being forced inside either by ourselves or with our loved ones whoever right our dogs our cats fish whatever <laughs> um and we i mean hindsight really is 2020 and it for sure it i i mean that in you know the 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 traditional sense of that quote as well as you know this year what is this year if not really clarifying and really like eye opening, you know, for all of us. Again, this is whatever whatever beliefs you choose to to claim and promote, you know, it's it's super clear that all types of stuff is going on and the the normal that we all lived maybe wasn't so beneficial for a lot of us. And it, you know, based based on how many groups of folks, you know, have have grievances <laughs> these days, you know, there's we clearly have not all been on the same page. And yeah. it's I if nothing else, you know, we we have to acknowledge, I think, that that is the case. And and you know, going back to the last sort of bit that we talked about, if if now is not the time to start talking about, all right, so what can we do to, I wonder why this person feels this way and like, what can I do to learn more? If now is not the time to exert that, you know, at its maximum, I don't know when is, yeah. you know? And it, I, I know it's, and unfortunately, you know, and I don't want to downplay again, the the strife and and grief and everything else that has come to this year. People have died for all, you know, pardon my language, everyone, people have died for all types of shit this year. Uh, and I don't, mm -hmm. and the, you know, for, for a while <laughs> they have been, it's not just, you know, a virus thing, you know, a uh, coronavirus thing per se, but like for a while, a lot of folks have been suffering and it's, I think it's a lot more clear to us now. And I also think that's yeah. why Black Lives Matter, the group as well as the movement itself have sort of escalated to where they are now because people are like, holy shit, man, this is <laughs> this has been this way, you know, yeah. I, and, and being stuck inside and then, you know, ergo being forced to look at the internet and seeing what's trending, i.e., you know, an example being like black folks being killed in the street. A lot of folks right. have had to confront it and it's become it's becoming a little bit more at least a little bit more clear for folks right yeah i would say if anything 2020 has brought more of an awareness and i know i think i think it's safe to say a lot of 
individuals, probably myself included, honestly, we view the world as it is for us, mm -hmm. I would say. And if everything's all right in my world, it's all right. But yeah. we don't look at it through the lens of others. Yeah. And are others hurting or, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, Matt, I don't, I don't know that it's inherently bad to, I also, you know, for better or worse, I believe that humans are generally, you know, acting out of self-interest, but, you know, self-interest can also involve the, the well-being of at least the folks nearby and around you. Um, and I, you know, I, I realize now that I said that from the perspective of living in, you know, like a city, like a big city, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, not, not only folks around, but around you, but, you know, caring at least a little bit for the folks, even that you see on TV. And I think, you know, that can be as simple as just not judging someone, uh, especially right. if you don't know them. And, you know, being curious and, you know, at least a little bit empathetic. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think let's, uh, let's show everybody some of your work. I'm going to share the photos that you had sent over this morning. If I can get this pulled up, right? Is that showing for everyone now? Yes, I'm able to see it anyway. So you want to kind of walk us through some of these? Um, like, where is the, is this downtown, right? Yeah, so this is at, oh God, 10th and Washington, 10th or 11th in Washington, uh, downtown at Bella's uh, Frozen Yogurt. So this was actually the first mural that we did as Painted Black. And <laughs> time was, you know, Tyson and I had been talking a couple of days before and he had been, uh, he actually lives lived in this building and you know he hits me initially and says hey you know we should do this this and that at bella's because you know i i'm connected with the store owner or manager right. and next thing i know you know i'm down there with him and you know my wife and a friend of ours and we just throw it up there and this was you know, just to, to show folks what it was we intended to do. Folks being, right. you know, folks who, people who don't necessarily deem themselves creative, as well as artists to show sort of what, what it is we're about. We're not about, you know, any sort of hate or beef or violence. We're just addressing a, a, a problem that we have here in St. Louis specifically, because we've seen these Unfortunately, this is not the first time we've seen boarded up windows uh, mm -hmm. in St. Louis in reaction to, you know, the, an, an event like the unfortunate one that happened with George Floyd, which was, mm -hmm. you know, this mural was shortly after that. Right. And from here, things sort of took off. So Brock here uh, shown a painting. I really liked this one. We have a better picture of it coming up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Brock, who is actually, I know, I know Brock and have known him for a while. I shot him a text about it saying, hey, like you want to be part of this? We're gathering donations as we speak, but we'll pay you, you know, whatever we end up getting. And a few days later, here he was at, at Urban Shark or Bike Shark. I don't really remember the, the name, but it's the bike shop, um, I believe on Locust downtown, something shark. Urban Shark, that's it, I'm standing on that. And uh, I mean, I suppose that's that's all there is about this one. And here he is posing. This one was actually shown in a lot of, you know, news and media. This, this is easily my favorite, you know, photograph. Yeah. That, that I think is well representative of Painted Black. For sure. Teeler Cheatham was at City Greens. I mean, by the time Teeler hopped on board, we started to become a little bit of an, of an oil machine. So I, I believe a lot of these images are, you know, artists standing with their work 
and was just showing how you know all these all these artists are so different in what it was that they wanted to say and communicate but the basis message was and is the same in that you know these folks are bringing value to our community this one specifically actually um eugenia painted eugenia alexander mm -hmm. painted at Del Mar and King's High, excuse me, Del Mar and Euclid. Uh, so it's right where, you know, you drive down up and down Euclid in the Central West End and it all looks great. This intersection is where things start to <laughs> start to look a little different. That uh, that yeah. Del Mar divide that we all, you know, either talk about or choose not to, uh, this is where yes. that, is. I believe it's still there. And she painted all of you know what you what you're seeing is these plants that are cascading throughout this space and it's actually two huge windows uh you know so at, at face value it's something beautiful right from a distance and when you get up close to it beneath and around the the, the leaves on these plants are you know the names of all not even all but a lot of well-known um you know cases of injustices so emmett till mm. george floyd brianna taylor etc yeah, I can kind of see some of them. Yeah, right there now. Very cool. This guy's a chump. This is <laughs> this is one that uh, this was fun. Is this like a where is this located? It's a ball. It's that fair. that is uh, in Clayton. And I God, I forget the name of the the like it's either a hotel or like an apartment complex or something like that but um this is one that brock seals and i both collaborated on uh the folks who sort of run the the property and premises reached out to us to do something and we this was sort of an unofficial painted black one but one where we still chose to to capitalize on what we wanted to communicate but also, you know, like sure. makes them look good at the same time. Yeah. And the arches. Yeah. Shakespeare. Yeah. Talk a little bit about this project. Yeah. All of us, not all of us, I, I spoke too soon. We, because Painted Black, I think, was being featured so many different places. Um, so it, shortly after we started, you know, working with different artists and doing murals and stuff, I think uh, Shakespeare sort of the Shakespeare Festival, St. Louis, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival, that's it, uh, reached out to us and said, hey, we're, you know, looking to do a walking experience in Forest Park this year instead of, you know, the the standard sort of setup that we usually have, which is like, you know, we do the stage, people all come out in mass, um, yeah. you know, and we, we do the thing. Are you interested? And honestly, without thinking, I, you know, without thinking or consulting, like with Tyson and Charlie, I said, hell yeah, because like <laughs> I was, I've been a fan of Shakespeare in the park, um, you know, for the last, and I've been going generally faithfully for, for some time now. Uh, so yeah, yeah. we they they told us what the deal was what the what the plan um what the layout was and like what the actual what the play was itself which was uh, a midsummer night's dream this this is what this whole thing is based in and they said hey we have 14 sort of stops uh that we want to involve artists and in. can you help us find some folks and we found some folks and found them. They, uh, they were each artist had a foam arch to paint that people can walk through, uh, you know, as as you move throughout Forest Park. Not even necessarily the experience itself, but mm -hmm. each artist painted one. We uh, our process in selecting artists was, I mean, it was first come first serve, serve at the time, and we wanted to really make sure that we are representing the fact that you know black people and black artists are not a monolith so we we sort of deliberately chose folks who were different in style and it wasn't that hard because most you know there's a lot of 
black artists as well as artists here in St. Louis who are all super variant in their style. Uh, so there was stylistically as well as demographically, we've had we had folks who were part of the LGBTQ plus community. We've had um, God. Now I'm trying to think. The point is, it was it was a very very diverse group of black artists, uh, which you know again is something that I think people need to realize is that there is there is no one group in this world because I've traveled the entire world uh, that is monolithic. Mm -hmm. So it 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 went well, and if if none of you got to saw it, it went really well. And we actually have another one coming up that you know maybe I'll talk about in a little bit. Yeah, you had mentioned um, Central West End, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the experience we're working on right now is also with Shakespeare. They basically said, "Hey, we want we want to we want to go for a." Uh, they didn't say this, but. You know, we want to go for our second ring, as it were. I've been watching The Last Dance again on Netflix, so I'm I'm in this mindset of like Michael Jordan. Oh, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> they, they, you know, they said we want to do this again, but in the Central West End, and the story will be, you know, instead of uh, a, a Midsummer Night's Dream, it will instead be a Christmas Carol. It'll be based off of a Christmas Carol. So, the event that we are working with Shakespeare on as we speak will be it's called a walking xmas carol or, or excuse me a walking xmas stroll okay well i'm going to call it a walking holiday stroll as to not to say xmas again like i just did sure but yeah we uh <laughs> instead so instead of arches there'll be mostly window displays so think like a diorama inside of your favorite retail shop, you know, at a mall or wherever else, right, in person. So it's, a dis the, these are mostly designed displays by artists of dis different disciplines, artists and designers of different disciplines to create sort of these 3D compositions that are based on these story moments uh, stemming from A Christmas Carol. And, and there's there still all those Will all of those go up at a certain date or is it like a progression or We're working on them now? Working on them now. Okay. Right now. If you all go, so at if you all go to Maryland and Euclid in the Central West End, which is, you know, one of the main hubs in that area, you'll see, you know, two murals on one on two corners. And you'll, you know, when you come down Maryland towards the chase, you'll see all these windows on the same side as the Chase Hotel, um, you know, filled with these displays that are being painted. And um, yeah, I mean, if you wanted to, I suppose you could like sit outside and watch progress. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're in the middle of working on those now and they'll be done, I believe by the end of next week. So in, in exactly a week, they should be done. Nice. And that's, I think coincidentally when as a matter of fact, it, it uh, the event goes live next Friday. So awesome. free, free admission, you can just walk in there just like Forest Park. Well, Javen, thanks so much for the conversation today. I know um, we do have one question already in the chat. Um, we're kind of going to switch gears and go to Q&A. Uh, Wesley, would you like to unmute and ask your question? Is he still on? Leslie is gone. Yeah, I'm not seeing them. Well, I do have one question myself. Um, do you see Painted Black expanding beyond St. Louis into other cities? Is that something kind of in the the big dream? At the in this moment, uh, the big dream is to work within St. Louis, and yeah. we got you know our stuff here straight, just to like get get straight to the <laughs> the premise of 
of the essence uh, of that, you know, of my answer. Um, a something that has inspired me for a while. Uh, so I'm also the vice president and um, some other stuff, but I'm also the vice president of AIGA St. Louis, which is essentially a design organization, one of our design organizations here uh, and nationally. And, and I, we interviewed for our podcast, SEO by Design, um, one of someone from RAC, Erica Fiola, uh, and she was RAC being the Regional Arts Commission, for those who don't know. And we talked about uh, community and implementing creative solutions into community and like how RAC deals with that. And one thing that she mentioned, uh, you know, as to why, like how she, how she believes changes made is, uh, and I quote, she said, do what you can where you are. And that mm -hmm. really resonated with me um, ever since then. And I've, I've been working to, you know, in, in a world where it's so easy to get in, in touch and involved with all sorts of issues um, that don't necessarily have to be local, right? So we see a lot of stuff going on overseas and outside of other states. And I, I, right. I think that's, you know, that's, that's great to be informed. It is great to be informed at all, at all times. There's no buts, full stop, period. Uh, I, you know, I also firmly believe in St. Louis, and, you know, it, thankfully I'm in the position I am now to know a good amount of folks here. Um, you know, those who deem themselves important and those who deem themselves unimportant you know, because what does that even mean? But, you know, those who deem themselves creative and not, and, you know, all sorts of comparisons and examples, right? So I know a lot of different right. folks. And I, you know, a lot of us and myself believe in what folks here have to offer. And I, I don't think we'll ever realize that if we don't, you know, look inwards, both as individuals and as a city, and just start to really work together and try to fix some stuff. And then maybe, yeah, like hopefully no one else is having this problem by the time we get our stuff together here. But uh, you know, if if there are folks who who need it, I, I we surely wouldn't say no to, you know, I don't know, like Detroit or Chicago or something like that. Though I doubt yeah. Chicago has <laughs> these same problems. They probably do, just not you know, to, to, to the extent that we do. Sure. It looks like, um, we do have a few more people wanting to ask questions. Um, Wesley, it looks like you're back. Would you want to unmute and ask yours? Yeah, I would. Thank you. Um, so Javen, when you started speaking about radical and the different definitions of them, it, when I say it made me start thinking about, um, and I guess the kind of, to start the question and then give a little context would be, if you think that descri the description of yourself or painted black or just this movement in general as being radical could be kind of like a misnomer um, or maybe like a bad frame in a way. And so like you, when you mention that a radical is a root um, and then it's also a description kind of in regards to social change. And so what it makes me think of is nine is the root or the radical of 81. So it's a radical to something. Um, and so even when it comes mm -hmm. to social change, something is radical in relation to the standard, which is going to be looked to at to be changed. And so it makes me think of radical in the sense of like a frame for an art piece where it, it's, um, it, it, it sets the foundation for the discussion or the medium to be communicated. And so when we're looking at the kind of social environment we're in, how you're saying we've been in for a, a very long, you know, decades and centuries of time. Do you ever look at being described as radical as almost being um, sometimes like improper in the sense that what your mission seems to move to is being more human and natural and creative, whereas normal doesn't mean natural, it just means standard, which seems as we've been sitting in our house this whole year, 
a lot more destructive than maybe was originally kind of one it you know people saw it as Wes, what was it? So I know Wes, and I knew you were going to ask me some or like bring this up, but like, well, what, what, so like, what do you think him? radical is a like a, a misnomer, like in the sense that if, if you're based in kind of nature and humanity and creativity, mm -hmm. calling you radical is also to call the standard or what's normal much more kind of destructive in a way so do you think you are the radical one or you the what's radical is what's needing to be changed if that makes it how the relation is more of like you're not the radical what's normal is radical and we need kind of thing man you really did ask me a hard question didn't you so oh first of all Wes, thank you for that question. Uh, kind of like in law, you have the, it's like if you're radical, you're putting the standard to prove it on me and not on it. Yeah. Man, I don't know. <laughs> I, I really don't know. It, it could be both. My guess is both. Um, both is my answer. And I know that's like a cop out half ass one, but. That's that's what I'm giving you. I think I, I think radic radicalism and the radical always exists uh, in sort of symbiosis. In that, you know, there there is no there is no radical shift that that is acknowledged without you know, me thinking critically and then, um, you know, by consequence, radically about something to change it. Did that answer your question <laughs> properly? Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it's kind of like not either or, but both and like normal might be radical to nature, but because I'm rooted in nature, I'm radical to normal. So it's like, just how you're viewing it more so than it is in itself. Bars. <laughs> Makes sense, okay. All right, we have a couple more questions. Uh, Trisha, would you like to unmute and ask yours? Yes, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for speaking about your um, organization that's helping to pretty much bring more pocket change to artists, local artists. I think that that's great. Um, my question is just in regards to how do you go about getting an artist to believe their worth? I know that over so many periods of time, um, art has just been viewed as like this beautiful thing to view, but not necessarily something to invest in, in terms of like other intellectual properties that people really invest in. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about um, building that belief um, and empowerment within the artists that are under your leadership? And how do you foresee that in the future in terms of making it a norm for if a person is wanting to have that intellectual property that is a very beautiful piece of art, either in their home or their museum or at a local um, establishment, how do you bring up the, the value of worth um, for that artist? And especially with it being a artists of color, a person of color, we know that we always experience, you know, extreme discriminations when it comes to pay or mm -hmm. so, how do, so how do you go about having those difficult conversations in terms of raising the value of your artists and their intellectual properties? And what do you see for the future in terms of that movement? Thank you for the question. This is a good one. So <laughs> I, I've been an artist my whole life uh and that is that is also a, a a title that i've had to just bear even if it's reluctantly because i know that you know i fully acknowledge your question in that you know people people think of art as a certain way and for whatever reason you know to your point it's it's underappreciated in that you know we we as as people as a people and as people 
um, you know, we we want to be inspired. We take inspiration. We take so much from this visual uh, uh, medium, and I, and you know, audio and all that other stuff. But we take so much from it. But for some reason, we expect it to be either cheap or free to us as as investors or or, or consumers. Or about consumers, that. yeah. So. You know, unfortunately, this is not something that is new to the world of art in general. Uh, as it relates to Black artists, it's shit. Even it's it's multiplied, right? Because we we are we contribute so much, but we're still you know minorities. So I'm you know we get milked and pimped to to put it simply. Uh, and I realize that, which is why I actually didn't even want to be. An artist because I, I acknowledge that you know before this was a while ago uh, I think and I've never known how to address that on my own uh, and I think that as an individual artist it's going to be a lot harder to and it typically is you know a lot harder to achieve the goals that you are communicating to you know potential investors in society at large what I think I hate to say it this way, but you know, to to plug this in because this is a question I take very seriously. But like, what I think, uh, painted black is starting to achieve and prove, you know, to folks in the community is that we can do, like, not only can we as black artists do good shit and like things that are really valuable in our community. But we're also, and well, we are also really good at it. You know, there there are folks who you don't have to reach out to, you know, the the big, the larger cities, the New Yorks, the Denvers, the LAs, whoever, to get valuable talent. It's it's probably going to be where you are to some degree, and uh, you know, they're getting paid for it. So we're sort of setting a standard that we're we're going to respect these folks' talents and you know and continue to put out. This is why all of our stuff is public facing at this point because you know we are directly showing folks like, yo, this talented so and so lives down the street and they got paid, you know, a fair amount to do this. Uh, ergo, you know, art is very clearly valuable. And then, you know, when, when you measure that up to like the metrics, for example, from the, the Shakespeare in the park event, it's like there were tens of thousands of folks interacting with these arches. And we know that because there were QR codes on each of these, like in between, in, in the middle of each of these arches when you walk through. So we were able to see those mm -hmm. numbers. And now we can firmly show that like, there's a lot of value in this because, you know, this many folks interacted, each of these artists made this much money. And, you know, this was a, that was a, big event for St. Louis this year in that it was really like the main one well like one of a few main events and we you know paid black paid local black artists are at the center of that so what what we plan to do to some degree is continue to communicate this and place emphasis on this moving forward especially after the Central West End thing hopefully you know assuming that goes well uh, and continue to prove through our actions that you know this is this really is valuable and you can choose to invest in it or not but one thing we are not going to settle for I won't say tolerate but one thing we're not going to settle for is undervaluing you know black artists in St. Louis because we really do have a lot to say you know Nelly is big for a reason I know you know <laughs> he's he's the main musician we take away from St. Louis but like if you want to use him as an example He's big for a reason because he's repping the city and he was he's good at what he does, right? And the, it's not different. There, there are folks who are hella talented in St. Louis and they need to be acknowledged. So we're, you know, putting putting on putting our and other folks' money where their mouth is and saying, if you like it, put money on it, you know, and they're not they're going to get 
quality stuff every time because we got a lot of talented folks here. So over time, I think we'll start to like refine this conversation a little bit more, Tricia. At the moment, it's, it's I think, purely action-based for us to show and prove that value. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. And then also some, I mean, from even what I'm hearing from you is like monetizing. So it's showing the amount of time it takes to work on a project, how many people that project can impact. You know, I know that I've seen the archways at Forest Park and mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. So I definitely think it's like monetizing, showing the amount of time, effort, even if you have to monetize it down to the products that you all use in terms mm -hmm. of how you equate that value. Um, so I hope that's some encouragement for you all. And I definitely hope you all continue to secure the bag as uh, some great artists mm -hmm. in the in the area. I really love you all's work, so thank you. Thank you. And actually that, uh, Trisha, reminds me of another point. Um, to, so to talk about value, it, it's, as a city and community, it's monetization, right? And that's like the big thing that people react to is like, how much it costs? How much were these, you know, how much money? How, what's the number? What's the number? What's the big number stat that we can throw out? And that's, you know, just a function of how we operate. But also there's, there's value in seeing these narratives and like seeing different folks' narratives because you never know what that can do for someone else, right? And, you know, speaking for myself as well, like I, there are things that I don't even think about and I'll see to that because I don't, it's a lot, again, there's a lot of shit I don't know, but, you know, there's a lot of things that are presented in different people's work, uh, even, you know, in the painted black stuff that I, I'll be like, oh, I didn't even think about that. And that'll drive, you know, my thought process to go down, you know, or research into or get to know, you know, this, that, and the other, basically like develop and develop and enrich myself because these perspectives were, you know, shown to me because they're public facing things. So that's, that's another part of that value. And I think adding like monetizing that, and I hate to say it that way, but I think assigning a dollar value to that sort of helps as long as, the, as long as the intent remains pure behind the messaging. And, you know, because we don't, mess around with like what artists want to communicate for the most part i think you know that that genuine tie-in is is the goal as well so not money for sure as well as you know getting these like different perspectives out here because that is important that's how we grow as individuals and you know ergo society eventually love it thank Perfect. you yeah, I think we just have one more question from Tyler. Would you want to unmute and ask yours this for our guy. final question? Um, so I'm okay. Tyler, you sound like Darth Vader. <laughs> Maybe uh, type it in the chat for us. Is that better? Yeah, there you go. Wow. Okay. Don't buy AirPods, I guess, is the uh, message. Yep. <laughs> anyway, um, so I know Javen, and I know this is important, so I wanted to bring it up and get more of his thoughts on it. So Javen, as you may or may not know, yesterday was International Men's Day. Uh, and so it, I think it's based on like memes and stuff I saw yesterday about that. It's like pretty easy to deride the idea of bringing more awareness to male related issues right now, especially mm -hmm. as we like continue to inform ourselves and bring change to like long-standing issues with, uh, you know, experienced by women and the LGBTQ community. But what are your thoughts, whether radical or not, on bringing a renewed focus to men's mental health? Hmm. Tyler, this is an excellent question. Uh, and, and, I realize I keep saying that to everybody, but like you all are really like coming after, going after it this morning. I appreciate that. So I think as, as, as someone who belongs to that demographic, I can say, you know, men's mental health is super important. Uh, like admittedly, what what mental health means to different folks is something I'm still learning about. 
you know, for myself as an individual and, you know, I have friends, right? So you and like Wes, for example, um, who are, who are also men, I have brothers, I have, you know, uh, you know, all I'm connected to all types of guys, right? And all in all different ethnic groups. So mental health for men is super important. And I, you know, I would argue that's kind of what got us into, into this predicament. We all sit in in the first place is, is, you know, the, the mishandling or, you know, misrepresentation, misuse, uh, mistreatment of men's mental health or you know someone not getting checked or not checked out but someone not getting the communication and help they needed and deserved and went on to do some wild shit because of it uh and you know unfortunately we're in a position at this point in time and have been to where uh somehow men have had a lot of say in a lot of things uh you know a lot of things admittedly they shouldn't but uh, I digress. So I, I think it's really important. I think, first of all, I didn't know that yesterday was, was it international or national men's day? International, the whole planet. Yeah. The whole planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I did not know that. Uh, I certainly, you know, I realized that as well in this moment, as, you know, to be clear, it's not, exactly a great time to to ah, it's tough That's what I, was at. I i understand what yeah I so it's and it, when i when i say it's not a great time it's just like i i say this from you know from a perspective of really you know wanting to prioritize certain things, um, you know, so like in the context of, um, I want to say this a certain way. And if, if I communicate anything that is a little bit off to any of you, I apologize. Uh, Cause I, you know, I mean no ill intent towards anyone or men. So uh, it's interesting because men is such a broad thing to say. I feel like like men's mental health is such a broad thing. There's we we are split into so many uh, different. We're not a monolith, right? What I was saying earlier is that there's no one group that's a monolith, and I think the it's super important to acknowledge that here too because men have different roles all all over the planet um so like you know there's black men versus white men there is there are trans men there's all types of stuff so i i don't i don't know if if i have a simple answer per se but i mean it's it's super important you know as as a cis man obviously i i well not obviously but i i do believe it is very important how that is approached. Uh, I mean, if, if I'm assigning a, a general uh, prescription to it, I, I would say, you know, that's, it, it's, it's up to, you know, that individual as well as maybe even the people around them to make sure that they're straight. And by straight, I mean, you know, good, good to go. Uh, but but that like ultimately is determined by you know first of all them wanting to acknowledge said thing you know uh and and acknowledge that it is i mean if nothing else present if, if it's not a challenge or a problem you know for said individual it it it's definitely a thing to be considered and cared for because you know, yeah, obviously men are people too. And, you know, we need to take care of ourselves as well. I also think that, you know, personally, if I'm speaking on it, we, uh, men have had our time. We, we, we've had a good amount of time to, to suss some things out. And like, if I'm being completely straight with it, we've not done a great job 
So maybe a mental health break is necessary for us to like chill out and, you know, stop violating so many things in the world. Um, that's my take on it. Hot take. You go take our mental health break and let others lead. Yeah. I'm into that. <laughs> <laughs> take a hiatus for, for a while and get our fun together. Yep. But yeah, All right. important. Great questions, everybody. Um, Javen, once again, thank you for the conversation this morning. Great talk. Loved it. Um, I guess is the best way for them to kind of follow you on Instagram. I know that's kind of where you post a lot of things. Yeah, I'm most active on Instagram. Uh, yes. So Instagram as uh, Javen Eyes or Painted Black STL and keep up with what's going on on both ends. Awesome. Well, yeah, everybody be sure to check out the, uh, the holiday stroll in Central West End and uh, give us a follow on social media ourselves, Creative Mornings STL. Hell yeah. And, uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone. And thank you all for having me, Matt.